five watercolor tutorial today we, we will be painting a butterfly and in the description of this video you will find the outline to my butterfly here as well as a reference photo to work from and I am painting my butterfly inside this eucalyptus wreath so this wreath we painted together a few weeks ago so if you would like to check out that live tutorial I'll link that in the description of this video. Hi, it looks like we have Ashton is here. Good morning and Sydney and Fallon, Kizzy, Sarah, Liz, Joyce. Good morning, everyone. Um, let me know if you're watching live where you're watching from and if you'll be painting with me today or if, if you're just hanging out. Okay, before we get started, I will go over my supplies with you. So I am using cold pressed watercolor paper from Arches. This is a size eight by eight sheet. And the paint colors I plan on using are some from Decadent Pies pan set from Art Philosophy. So I plan on using the white mocha here and the banana cream. And I might also use um, this pistachio cream here, but I'm not quite sure yet. And then maybe pumpkin. Okay, and then I plan on using three other colors. So um, the reference photo, I, I don't plan on going re like perfectly off of the photo because I want to incorporate these same colors from this wreath in my butterfly. So I plan on using these three colors here that I use for the wreath. Um, so I have May and Dark Blue from Daniel Smith. I have um, Co Cobalt Green Deep from Windsor & Newton. And then I have the shimmery green here called Fern from KMS Watercolor. So I plan on incorporating these into my butterfly. Hi, Amber. She says, hey, Allison. Good afternoon from Kent, UK. I'm painting along today. Awesome. Hi, Des. Okay. Oh, I didn't share my brushes with you. So I'll be using these brushes, these brushes here. My silver black velvet brushes, size four and two, and they are round brushes. And I might also use white gouache too at the end. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I think, um, let's see, I think for this butterfly, I will be painting the light goldish yellow colors in the butterfly. And then I'm thinking for like the blue part of the butterfly, um, painting some of, some of the areas, this dark blue, the main dark blue uh, from Daniel Smith. And then also, with this uh, cobalt green deep, oops, from Windsor Newton. So that's kind of my thoughts, and I will I will be painting the light yellow areas first. So we'll do that first. Um, so I am going to mix a color here. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna mix it like right here. Okay, so I'm going to take my size 4 brush here. I'm going to take some of this mocha. So what I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to mix like a pastel yellow color. So if you don't have this pan set, you, you can use um, white watercolor paint mixed with some yellow. You can also just mix a lot of water into a yellow that you have or like a gold. Okay, so yeah, I'm just adding this to my palette with some water. And then I am going to mix this banana cream into it. Okay. And I, I want it to be very light, so I'm going to mix more of this white in it. And some more water. Okay. And then um, when I was transferring my outline onto my paper, I used um, a watercolor pencil 
kind of like a, a green blue color to kind of help me um, figure out like where I, I want to paint my blue, if that makes sense. So if, if you see some blue here, it's from a watercolor pencil and then I traced most of my outline with just a pencil. And I, I used my light pad to um, tra uh, trace my outline onto my paper. Okay. I'm gonna put this like right here. Hopefully I don't like <laughs> make like an accident and splatter my paint on my painting. I do that all the time, I feel like. Okay, I'm going to now work on this wing first here. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to... So with my watercolor pencil, I, I, I did kind of put it in areas where there is yellow and I regret that. So you can see like right here. So hopefully it doesn't blend too much to my yellow. I, I tried to erase it. Okay. And when we get to this area here, this is going to be a blue. So we don't want to paint this yellow. And then I might also add some of this up here. All right, and then now I'm going to do the other wing, do the same thing. By the way, um, if you don't know, I do have a 10 day, a free 10 day watercolor butterfly challenge that you can sign up for. We paint five butterflies in 10 days and it comes with um, tutorials just like this, live tutorials, although you'll get access to the replays because we already did it, um, did the live tutorials. But yeah, it's really fun. So if you wanna check that out, I um, linked it in the description for you. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the lower wings. Okay, so I do need to mix more of this color. I'm gonna do that. So, um, have you painted a butterfly before? Let me know in the chat or in the comments if you have, or if this is your first time I love painting butterflies. It's like one of my most favorite things to paint. <laughs> okay, so this butterfly has a light yellow um, inside these arcs here. And also a little bit like right here. So I'm going to apply some yellow here. <clears throat> and Here, I guess I like I'm not too worried about making it perfect because we will be going over a lot of these like these spots here so I can always touch up areas around these spots when I paint in those spots if that makes sense and I'm trying not to paint um, where my green uh, watercolor pencil marks are. I really wish I didn't do that. I kind of regret that. <laughs> okay, and then this butterfly has some gold or like yellow over here and it looks like it didn't really draw that in but it's kind of like right here. Louis says, I did your monarch, and my husband said, wow. 
Well, I'm glad. <laughs> Good. I love painting monarch butterflies. Okay. Oh, and I just realized that it's yellow up here too. If you hear a fiddle, I'm sorry. Jimmy is off today from work and he, I guess he's playing his fiddle. Maybe he forgot that I go live Friday mornings. <laughs> okay. It's not yellow right here. It's okay. I can always touch it up later. And then there's some like right here. All right. I could have taped down my paper, but I chose not to because I I just like to move it around and I'm not like applying a ton of water to my painting. If I was, I would have taped it down. Um, but yeah, it, it might warp a little bit, but it's okay. And then he also has um, some yellow on his body area. Okay, so there is like the first layer on our butterfly. Um, let's see, I'm trying to figure out if I want to, I, I think I'm gonna add a second layer of yellow in some areas. So if you look at the reference, um, the wings, like on the outer edge of the wings, it's kind of like a darker yellow. So I, I'm gonna paint that in. So let's mix a darker yellow. Okay, so again, I'm gonna take this banana cream. This time for this yellow, this darker yellow, I will not add as much white watercolor paint or as much water. Hi Hannah, good morning. She says, I was hoping you'd paint a butterfly inside your wreath. <laughs> Yeah, I, it was a hard decision. I, I was thinking either a butterfly or a bee, but we, we've recently painted bees here on my channel, um, like last month. So I, I thought, okay, it's been a while since I've done a butterfly that I will paint a butterfly. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna add this pumpkin color to it. So if you don't have these colors, you can mix yellow with a little bit of brown to make it kind of like a darker yellow. Okay, is, I, I wanna add, um, let's see, what should I add? No, I think this is fine, okay. And I will be working two brushes at once or like going back and forth. So I'm gonna take the size two round brush here, my other brush, and I'm going to blend with this brush as I paint. So this blending brush just has clean water in it. It doesn't have any paint. Okay, so I'm going to now paint just like the outer edge here. Like that. And then I'm going to take my blending brush 
and blend. And I am cleaning my brush um, frequently. So every time you see me take my brush away from my painting, I'm cleaning it and adding some more water. So now I'm going to do the same thing on this wing. Um, I don't know, Hannah. I don't know what kind of butterfly that this is. <laughs> if anyone knows, please share. I, I just found this pic, like the reference picture on Pixabay, and I just thought it was so pretty. But it doesn't say on the reference photo, like, what kind of butterfly it is. Yeah, so with but butterflies, when I paint them, I like to first paint like the lightest areas, like the lightest colors, and then I'll paint the darkest colors last. That's how I usually paint butterflies. Hey Green, she says, hi Allison, do you have plans for Easter? Yeah, um, today, like in the afternoon and evening, we will be hanging out with Jimmy's family, like um, our, our siblings and my mother-in-law, and it'll be a lot of fun. And we plan on um, having dinner together what about you guys? You guys have Easter plans? Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think here. Where else I want to add this darker yellow brown color? So I guess I will add some around the edge of the bottom wings here. Just because I, I want to. It doesn't really look like it's as dark as the top wings, but yeah. I usually, as I paint, um, I usually don't go strictly off of my reference. I kind of just end up doing what I want to do. <laughs> Unless I'm trying to paint something like very accurate. Okay, so yeah, I am switching back and forth to my blending brush, which just has water in it, and I'm just kind of blending this darker brown yellow into the lighter yellow. Hi, Mary. Hi. How are you doing? I'm happy to see you here. Okay, so I am cleaning my brush now. Okay, so we basically have um, 
most of the yellow painted in. There's a chance I will go back in later on and add a bit more to the yellow areas. But I think it's time to start working on the blue areas of this butterfly. Okay, so, oops, sorry about that. Um, okay, I'm trying to think here. Um, what, like, what kind of blue I wanna use? Okay, so if you missed the beginning of this tutorial, I, I wanna use a color from the wreath for my butterfly, just to help bring it together. Um, so, I, and, and I do want to uh, add a dark blue that we see in the reference photo too. So I think I will add the dark blue like on these spots here and then maybe a little bit throughout the blue, but then maybe have this um, cobalt green deep from Windsor Newton have that be like the base blue. Hi, Shelly. Good morning. Are you painting with us today? Okay, so I'm going to take my palette here. And I, I, I already have this color on my palette from when I painted the wreath. But I do um, want to add some more. So I'm just reactivating this by adding some water to it. And then going to add some more of this. Okay, and this uh, layer, we're gonna first paint with, um, I want it to be light, so a lot of water. Miri says, good, haven't been on in a while, loving spring. I am too, although yesterday did not feel like spring because it was snowing where I lived yesterday. <laughs> and it was so cold and windy, but it's going to warm up again, so that's good. Okay, so again, I will be um, working back and forth with a blending brush, which just has water, and then my brush that has paint. I'm going to start with these areas here. Okay, so I'm just going to um, fill this in. Like that, and then I'm gonna switch to my blending brush. And blend this a little bit into the yellow. I don't want to blend too much though because, um, I mean, it will create a little bit of green, which is okay with me because this is already kind of green anyways. And then if you look at the re at the reference, it looks like some of the blue starts to kind of uh, trickle down like this. And remember, this is just the first layer. Like, we will add more detail. Okay, I'm going to now add, like, um, do the same thing on this wing here. When I was um, planning out this painting, <clears throat> I can't believe it's been, like how long it's been since I've painted a butterfly. Like I haven't painted a butterfly since I think the fall. So it's really nice to paint one again. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so I'm taking more of this color here. And now I'm going to paint in this outer edge. So I, I applied my paint and then I'm switching to my blending brush and I'm just kind of um, rendering this area more, spreading it out. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Um, I'm going to move my camera a little closer for you guys. I feel like it's kind of far. Okay. Yeah, when I paint butterflies, I like to turn my painting a lot. It just makes painting them easier. So that's kind of, yeah, why I didn't tape my painting on my desk. You could tape your painting like on a hard board. Um, if you're not painting like on a block or pad, but I don't really have one. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, so now I'm gonna add this in some more areas. Shelly says, I'm nearly finished with my deadlines, then I can get back to painting. I can hardly wait to do this tutorial. I love it. Yay! That's exciting. Hannah says, oh, me, me too, Shelly. It's frustrating when you want to paint but have to work instead. Thanks, Des. She says, already so pretty. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm also going to add this on his on his body. I'm gonna paint around his eyes. <clears throat> And I'm going to switch to my blending brush and just kind of work this more. This is just my technique. It's like, it's, it's how I like to paint. And I'm going to move this down to the middle because he has like a line in the middle. Thank you, Sarah. She says, butterfly is looking beautiful. Hannah says, when we did the last butterfly challenge, I was feeling tired of painting butterflies by the end, but I gotta say that painting butterflies is pretty easy now after painting so many of them. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, that, that's why I haven't painted a watercolor butterfly since the challenge. <laughs> this is like the first time since, um, I think September? Since September that I painted a butterfly. Or I guess August. Which is kind of crazy. Um, okay, so I want to add this color also to this area here. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay, 
and then I'm switching to my blending brush. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of blend this into the yellow a little bit. Yeah, this is just like, I, I feel like we're in the ugly stage right now. <laughs> so if, if you feel like your butterfly is looking ugly, you just have to keep pushing through um it'll get better as you keep going <clears throat> okay i'm switching to my blending brush Okay, Hannah says, it's great to see the improvement from my first butterfly compared to my last. Isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. You guys should see my very first butterflies. They were not very good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add this color to the tails. So again, I'm switching to my blending brush here, just kind of working this more, blending it up. Anna says, have you ever repainted a painting that you did when you first started watercolor? I think I'm going to repaint the March Bunny Challenge that you did in March 2020. I haven't, and you know what? I, I, I want to do something like that. I do. I feel like that would be very interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing uh, how much you've improved, Hannah when you do that rabbit painting. Shelly says, I totally agree, Hannah. Since I can't get to painting after a long day of work, I've started enjoying the warmer weather and walking around the riverside taking photos of woodland animals and birds. Nice. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I'm just looking at the reference and I'm trying to figure out our next step here. So, um... We painted in the first layer of the blue areas. And if you're just joining, my blue does look different from the reference because I wanna add the same blue I used in the wreath into my butterfly. So um, that's why it doesn't look completely like the reference. <laughs> okay, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna add another layer of the same color areas. So I'm cleaning my brushes because I want to start painting with my size 2 brush, my smaller brush. Okay, so I'm going to take this same color I've been using and I'm adding it more to my, I'm adding more to my palette. This time just not as much water 
so it's a little darker. Okay, and I'm gonna start by adding some to the very edge of his wing here. And then I'm switching to a blending brush with just water. So now I'm kind of blending this over here and then moving it this way. Then um, I'm going to add a little bit more over here. I'm switching to my blending brush. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this other wing. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. <laughs> I'm laughing because this butterfly is like turning out to be more challenging than I thought it would be. Um, all right, I'm going to now add some more of this color like in the middle right here. So I'm like just dabbing my brush and then I'm painting in his head a little bit more and then I'm switching to my blending brush and now I'm just kind of dabbing my brush. I, I don't want all of this to be covered with that darker shade. I want some of that lighter color to show to give him some texture. And then I'm going to add some more like down here. And then some more in the middle. Because he has like a, a line in the middle. And then I'm just going to kind of blend this a little bit into the yellow. Okay. This is very spring in Arizona today. I am so not wanting to go to the shop to work. I will paint all day <clears throat> and sneer at my customers. <laughs> that is so funny. And she says, that's my plan. I just finished the yellows. <laughs> You're too funny, Liz. Uh, Amber says, can I ask what color you're using for the darker parts? I plan on using this um, Mayan Dark Blue from Daniel Smith. And then this blue I have been using is Col Cobalt Green Deep from Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton. All right. Um, 
yeah, I'm going to now switch to the darker blue. Okay, which is, like I just said, that me and dark blue from Daniel Smith. <laughs> Hannah says, the ground was covered in a light snow this morning. It was like that for me yesterday morning. Now it's melted. Thank goodness. And today is supposed to be like high 48 Fahrenheit. So that's nice. Okay. So yeah, I'm just adding this to my palette, adding some water to it. I do want this to be pretty dark. So I don't want to add too much water. And going to add a piece of paper right here just to protect my my painting because I have my palette on my painting like this for you guys so you, you can see me mix colors. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have it on my painting and I made accidents <laughs> having my palette on my painting like this. Okay. So... I'm going to go back to this area and now add this darker blue. At the base of the wing and then I'm switching to my blending brush with just water and blending this into this other blue. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Liz says, my dad had cataract surgery the last few weeks, and I'm so tired of people. I will try to be nice, but <laughs> it's okay, Liz. It's okay. You don't always have to be super nice all the time if you're not feeling it. Hannah says, the crocuses are poking through the snow. I know. I, I love when I see them in the spring. I, it makes me so happy. Okay, I'm going to take this dark blue now, and I am going to paint in his little eyes. His little eyes. So I'm just using like the very tip of my brush here. I'm leaving a little bit of white in his eye for like a little highlight. I'm going to try to make this eye the same size as the other one. I don't know why this happens to me. Like, I, I draw them out, make everything out, but sometimes things, like symmetrical things, like the wings on each side or the eyes, one is, one is always bigger than the other. <laughs> okay, that's, this is fine for now, I guess. Fallon says, I was late for work yesterday because my doors were frozen shut and my windshield was a block of ice. <laughs> and she says, it was 70 degrees two days before. Oh, I know how that is. Yep. We, we live pretty close to, uh, to each other, so I feel like our weather is the same. One day it's 70, the other day it snows. <laughs> okay. I'm going to add some of this dark blue, like right here, and then kind of like in the middle. So I'm just dabbing my brush, 
and then I'm switching to my blending brush. I'm just kind of dabbing at this, letting the blue kind of blend into the other blue. And letting some of that other like lighter blue show through in areas. Jeez, Shelly says that she had a blizzard on Monday. How awful is that? That does not sound fun to deal with. Okay, I'm gonna add more of this dark blue because I feel like, at least in the reference, he, he has um, a lot of dark blue right there. And then again, I'm switching to my blending brush. Liz says, the snow comes through here a few days before it hits the eastern side of the U.S. Um, okay. Okay, so I'm going to take this. I'm going to add more of this dark blue to my palette with some water. Okay, I know for a fact that I want to paint these spots dark blue. So I will do that as I think about where else I want to add this blue. <laughs> okay, looks like we could have a spot here that I just didn't draw. Okay, and then I'm switching my blending brush and I'm kind of just blending the um around this spot and then as we get to the very edge right here it looks like he does have some blue here so I'm gonna kind of drag some of this over Okay, and when I paint butterflies, I like to work back and forth. This just helps me remember what I did instead of doing like painting a whole entire wing and then doing all of those steps to the next wing. Like I just like to work back and forth. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Liz says Holbrook, Arizona has the same altitude as Denver, so it gets cold, but the snow doesn't stick. I have lived in, in Montana. I like Arizona better. So, uh, Liz, you probably don't get a lot of snow then, or you, you do, but it just melts um, throughout the day. Okay, so yeah, I am painting in this spot like that, and then I'm switching brushes, switching to my blending brush, and then I'm kind of just blending the outer edge here. And the trick with spots, at least on, on butterflies, is that you don't want it to be a perfect circle because if you look at the reference, it's not like it's more of like a 
yeah, like an imperfect circle. So making your circles or your spots imperfect just helps make the butterfly more realistic. And I kind of painted over like where he's yellow right here. So you know what? That's okay. It's okay. He doesn't have to be yellow right there. <laughs> and then he has like another spot above this one that I just didn't draw in for some reason. So I'm going to add that in. It's like right here. Then I'm switching to my blending brush and just kind of dabbing around the edge of this. And then I'm adding, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing over here. So how is your butterfly coming along? Let me know in the chat or in the comments how it's going. Are you finding this challenging or are you finding it easy? Liz says the butterfly is looking very nice. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna keep working on these spots here. So I apply the paint and then I switch to my clean brush with just water. I like to call this my blending brush. I just kind of work the paint more, blend it. Okay, I'm going to move to this one over here. So what kind of tutorial do you guys want to see for next Friday? I would love to know your ideas. Because I don't really have a plan for next Friday's tutorial yet. And I know Hannah, you requested a mouse. And we will be doing a mouse soon. I was thinking like a mouse under a mushroom would be so cute. So that one will be soon, but I was thinking more like in a few weeks around the time when my Woodland Animal Art Challenge starts up. Which signups for that, it's, it's a free art challenge. Signups for that will open up here soon. I'm thinking like in two weeks. 
So that's exciting. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, thanks, Hannah. <laughs> she says, this is going to be stunning. Okay, I'm adding more of this Mian Dark Blue from Daniel Smith to my palette and adding some more water to it. But not too much water. Again, I, I want this to be dark. Yeah, doesn't it, Shelly? She, she says, a mouse under a mushroom sounds so sweet. I was thinking of doing a ladybug. What do you guys think of that? And I was going to say a ladybug on a mushroom. Obviously, I have mushrooms on my mind right now. <laughs> I just thought it would be so cute. Like on a mushroom. And it says, you are doing a, oh, oh yay, you are doing a mouse. I have a mouse sketched with a flower bending over it, shielding it from the rain. I might make a painting out of it. Ooh, that sounds so cute. Joyce says, yeah, a ladybug. Yeah, I'm thinking we'll do a ladybug at some point. Maybe next Friday. Okay. Yeah, and as I am working on these spots, I'm trying to make them uh, the same size on each wing. Okay, so this one might be a little bigger than that one, so I'm going to go back into this one here and kind of make it a little bigger. And then I'm going to start painting in these little spots up here. Oh yeah, Liz has a ladybug and a snail. I do want to paint a snail again. They're so darn cute. If you guys don't know, I do have a snail tutorial, a snail on a mushroom that we did a year ago. It was actually like one year ago, a few days ago, and it was my very first live tutorial here on YouTube. So yeah, if you want to check that out, you can find it on my channel or just like search Alice in Line Art Snail or Alice in Line Art Mushroom and you should find it.
So every time I dip my blending brush in my water again, I like clean it. And then I dab it on my paper towel to um, soak up the excess water. Because when you blend, you, you don't want too much water in your brush. really try not to make this spot too big. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah says, butterfly is looking great. <laughs> Hannah says, a cat watching a fish. That's a cute idea. As Hannah says, snails are adorable unless they are in my garden. Liz says butterfly identification is not turning up for this butterfly. Research time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me know, Liz, if you find out what butterfly this is. Trish says, I'm so late. I slept in. It's looking so pretty. Thank you, Trish. Okay, this butterfly has um like a a spot right here. Okay, I'm really trying to make this one look exactly like that one right there. I guess I'll go back and forth to make them look similar. Okay, and then he is uh, blue right here, and I, I'm gonna clean my brush real quick and paint that in with this other blue or I guess it's more of like a green that we were using okay and then I'm switching to my blending brush And then I'm going to kind of move this up a little bit because there's like a, a vein here. Move, move this up. 
Okay. On this side. <clears throat> okay. How is my video, guys? I just looked at my iPad and my, my live video was kind of leaking out there for a second. Okay. Hannah says, if you haven't seen e Epic, Allison, you need to watch it. Everything you paint is in that movie. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Sarah says, scream a bit jumpy there. Yeah, um, I think my internet was like acting up for a second, but it seems like it's okay now. At least Han Hannah says it's fine. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, now I'm, okay, I'm trying to think now what, what we should do next. Um, let's see. Let's see. I, I think I'm going to add some of this darker blue, like on the tails. So I'm going to add more to this well here with some water. Man, dark blue from Daniel Smith. Oh good, it's okay now, good to know. I'm just gonna add it to the edge here. Like that, then switch to my blending brush. Then kind of move this up to this vein here, like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Is Epic on... Disney Plus? Is that like a Disney movie? Hannah or anyone? <laughs> okay. I'm going to add some more of this dark blue. I, I might just end up painting his whole tail here. Dark blue. And may maybe have some of it be that lighter blue too. So I'm going to kind of drag some of this off. Like that, and then kind of move it up and paint in this vein, the very tip of my brush here. So this kind of blend out. I will probably end up painting all of this dark blue too. Trish says, a mouse under a mushroom. Yeah, <laughs> that would be so, so cute. Okay, and then if you look at the reference photo, this butterfly, you know, has veins. We just painted in two right here. Um, but at the base of each vein, there is some blue. So there's like some blue here. So I'm going to switch to my blending brush, 
blend this into that yellow a little bit and then up drag it up and let's see it same over here Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on the other wing. I have a cat hair in my brush. <laughs> Leo, he likes to play with my brushes. I always have to be sure I put them away or else he'll find them. And I'm going to paint in the other ones. So I apply the paint like as thinly as I can and then I kind of like drag it up. Okay, and then I'm going to add dark blue, like, right here. Okay, it is time for like a minute break. We're going to do the artist spotlight. So let's take a minute break here. Okay, let me switch my, uh, my camera around. Okay, so if you're new here, every live video we do an artist spotlight. Um, and we, fe we feature an artist who used the hashtag Alice in Line Art Tutorial on Instagram. And so if you use that hashtag and you tag me so I, I can see it, um, you might be featured in a future live tutorial. So for today's tutorial, uh, for today's Artist Spotlight, it is... Okay, I, I'm, I might say this wrong, so... Please forgive me. Palacios Paints. So I linked her Instagram in the description for you guys if you wanted to check out her art and support her on there. But she does beautiful artwork and she did my eucalyptus wreath tutorial from two weeks ago. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, and also one other cool thing about her is that she's hosting an art challenge soon. Um, it starts April 4th. 
So if you want to practice your loose florals and you want to do this challenge, there you go. I might do it. Um, I, I want to do it. So yeah, there you go. Isn't her art pretty? Okay. I'm going to uh, turn my camera back around here. Okay. Forgive me as I get situated. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I think that's good. Yeah, it does. Isn't her art beautiful? <clears throat> Sarah says, not sure what butterfly that is. Just looked in my encyclopedia of butterflies and moths. Not in there. Hmm, it's a mystery, isn't it? <laughs> Will we ever find out what butterfly this is? <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Yeah, Liz, her, her art is just so pretty. All right, back to this butterfly. Um, okay, I am thinking, I'm, I'm going to start working on these upper wings because this area over here is always the hardest for me. So I kind of just, I guess I'm just kind of putting it off. Okay, so, Oh my gosh, there's another cat hair in my brush. <sighs> okay, so yeah, I'm adding more of this May and Dark Blue from Daniel Smith to my palette. And I just splattered on my painting. Probably can't tell, right there. I'm just gonna leave it. No, wait, maybe I'll soak it up. Soak it up with this clean, dry brush. I'm just scared of making it worse. Oh no. Okay. I might uh, touch it up with some white gouache. I'm just going to leave it. <sighs> okay. Here we go. Oh, okay. Hannah says, I think Epic is on Disney Plus. I looked it up and it was supposed to come on Disney Plus on January 29th. It's a super cute animated movie. I just love animated movies yeah you know I haven't seen too many like too many animated movies I love the Miyazaki movies like those I, I love so much Jimmy and I we have almost all of them um but yeah yeah they're they're like an, a piece of art in themselves okay I'm gonna add this dark blue to this butterfly here okay Ooh, okay, this, this may be a little, a little stressful. Okay, I'm going to add it around, oh wait, never mind. I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm just going to add it like here and here and kind of paint around the veins like that, okay? And then I'm switching to my blending brush and I'm going to kind of blend dark blue okay this didn't really work out how I was thinking it would And then over here, he has some blue that kind of emerges from this area. So like this, I'm gonna kind of start dragging this paint out. I will do another layer. And then I'm going to kind of drag this paint over here to start softly painting in these veins. All right, 
Now we're going to do the same thing on the other wing. And I will move my camera a little closer. I feel like it's kind of far. All right. I'm going to um, turn my painting because I feel like it'll be easier for me. Switching to my blending brush now. Okay, I'm gonna turn my painting a little bit more. We'll start kind of dragging this out. I'm really trying to make these um, trickles of blue symmetrical to the other wing here. This is um, <laughs> one of the hard things about butterflies is making the wings symmetrical. Like, it's quite difficult. I'm gonna add some more dark blue here to kind of help me, or like help make the wings look more even because I feel like this wing has some darker blue. And then I'm gonna kind of drag off part of this blue here. Oh. Uh, Liz says, I saw the most beautiful Robin this morning. He was so bright. Red, I'm going to have to try and get a photo. This weekend I'm trying to move my chicken coop around so I will be outside a lot. Nice. Okay. Um now I oh, I think I might start to paint in the veins. Um, first I'm gonna paint in more dark blue, like right here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this wing. Do you guys like tutorials like this where we do one part of it one Friday, like 
like for instance, the wreath here, and then the, another part, another Friday, and it's more of like a completed painting or just more of like a detailed painting? Or do you like more of like a, a one-time tutorial? Okay, um, I'm looking at the reference. And it does look like he has some blue on the outer edge of his top wings here. So I think I will kind of go along the edge. Maybe just that part there for now. And then go along, blend this slightly into that yellow. And then drag this more this way. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this wing. So I, I apply the paint with one brush and then another brush, I'm going in with just water. And I am blending. Although I feel like I added more blue on the swing. <laughs> I think I'm going to add a little bit more blue, like right here. Hannah says, I enjoy all of your tutorials, whether one time or a two time video. Good. Good to know. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try something out. So I'm cleaning my brush. Um, and I'm gonna take Fern here. Fern from KMS Watercolor. It's like a shimmery green. Actually, I'm going to add some to my palette. Okay. So I'm just going to take some of this green here. And if you look at the reference, he has um, some, some like, it, look, it looks like blue. He has some blue that kind of trickles in between each vein. So I kind of want to do that, but with this green color. So I'm just going to kind of add some like this. And then take my blending brush here. And kind of blend this. Hi, Catelyn. She says, I'm here late today. It's okay. At least you can make it.
she says, or Kat, Catlin says, I had a fun Easter hunt for my son this morning. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, we'll be doing that this afternoon with my um, niece and nephew. She says, wow, it's so beautiful. I'm happy to catch the end. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's proving to be a little, like a little bit more challenging than I thought it would, but it's okay. It's all right. Okay, then I'm gonna add the same green, um, like on these here, like that. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other wing now. This tutorial, I feel like it's gonna be like a two hour tutorial. <laughs> oh wow, well. at least we'll be painting a beautiful butterfly. All right. I like I keep bumping into my tripod that's holding my camera. I'm sorry. This has such a gorgeous color, that shimmery green. Yeah. Yep, it's from KMS Watercolor. Um, I can't remember if I told you guys, but I do have a 10% off coupon code for you for her shop in the description. I also link to all the supplies I'm using. they're out like how are you doing neighbor oh I'm good how are you <laughs> and doing like yard yard work okay um I kind of want to add a little bit more of this over here And then, yeah, 
I do want to add some more on the side. Oops, it's kind of a lot. Catlin, the artist spotlight was uh, Palacios Paints. I think that's how you say her username. She's on Instagram as that, and I, I did link her Instagram in the description. Liz says, I'm cleaning up this huge mess and going to work. <laughs> I'm so sorry I missed the nature with watercolor meet up Allison like I said dad sur dad surgery but I'll catch the replay all right yeah that, that's okay Liz I I plan on uploading the meet up here soon um like that the replay after this tutorial here yeah uh, she's she's linked in the description the spotlight artist Okay, I am going to add some more of this uh, shimmery green here in this blue because I feel like I really like it. I like this shimmer in this dark blue. It just looks really pretty. All right, and um, okay, I think now I'm going to start painting in the veins, which is one of the most stressful parts of butterflies um but here we go I'm gonna take I'm, I'm gonna paint them in with this main dark blue from Daniel Smith and I think I'm gonna use a different brush I have a brush that is probably better for this um let's see I think I'm gonna use this brush it is a size one silver black velvet script brush so it's like really long okay, and the trick for veins is to not have too much water or too little water in your paint if you have too much water, your veins won't be as thin as you'd probably want them. And if you have too little water, painting them on won't, won't be very smooth. Like, um, here, let me, let me get a test sheet of paper. So you might want to test it out. So that's, that's kind of what we're going for. Oops, you can't even see my painting. All right, here we go. Uh, okay, so this thing up here kind of like emerges like this. Ooh, all right, this, I probably won't talk much during this because this is kind of stressful. And we have another one right here. Ooh, okay. <clears throat>
Anyone else stressing out? <laughs> I'm going to take my size 2 round brush with a little bit of this blue paint and just kind of render these veins a little bit more. And this vein here kind of like emerges right here. Oh my goodness, that was really stressful. Now we have to do it all over again. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So where are you guys at in your painting? I would love to know. I'm, I'm moving my painting now this way. So that, that might be easier. Okay, um, let me, let me see here. These two sides here are, are different. I'm trying to figure out what I did. I think, I think a vein, like, emerges this. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, and then we have the vein barely see my pencil marks.
Yeah, this um, script brush is great for veins. Okay, I'm gonna take my size two round brush here with just some water in it and just kind of blend this end of this vein a little bit out. I need to figure out what's going on here. So we have this vein, and then we have another one. So I think one um, emerges from about here. Okay. We're probably doing the hardest part of this painting right now, so <laughs> if it's taking a while, it's fine. I'm going to um, take my size 2 round brush now, take some of this oh, that I was using, and then just over some areas. Okay, looks like my video might be wigging out for a second. I'm sorry about that. Oh, I missed a vein. Um, okay. There's one like right here. I want to see if the vein's painted in. You're done with the hardest part of the painting, so that's that's a, a relief, right? Okay. Now, I, I think I will add some dark blue uh, to various parts of the upper two wings. So I'm just taking more of this May and Dark Blue from Daniel Smith with some water. And in between each vein, there's a little bit of green that I painted in. And I kind of want to add a little bit of this dark blue, too. So I'm going to add that in, take my other brush here that is clean. It just has water, and I'm just going to kind of blend this. Kind of soften it up, make it kind of fade at the edge of the wing.
So do you guys have any plans this weekend? Any fun plans? Thank you, Patricia. She says, it's looking so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I was not planning on this tutorial being this long. I, I'm sorry if, if you're like me, this is super long. I'm gonna add some dark blue right here too and kind of just blend it like that. All right. Now onto this wing and then we will add more detail over here in his body and the antennas and we'll be done. If you guys are not painting this butterfly, what are you working on? Are you uh, painting something else and just hanging out? Shelly says, we're heading to Crocus Prairie on Sunday to see a crocus or two popping up through the snow and view some wildlife. I'll be taking my camera along just in case. That sounds really nice, Shelly. I hope that you have a great time. Okay. Um, <laughs> now it's time to just um, work on the lower wings again. So we, we need to add some more detail. I think... I'm going to add some dark blue, this dark blue here. So I'm going to take more of this dark blue, add it to my well with some water. Okay. And I'm going to start at the top here, like this. And then switch to my size 2 brush with just water.
and then um, blend down. And where, where there's veins, I'm going all the way like this. And then, um, yeah. And then kind of blending the, in between the veins into this lighter blue. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Okay, and then I'm going to add some of uh, the fern color, the shimmery fern color. Oops, sorry guys, I'm so sorry I keep bumping into my camera. I'm going to add some of this to some areas. Okay, and then I feel like I'm not... I think I'm gonna add some like down here. And then take my blending brush. It's just a clean brush with water and kind of blend this down and up, kind of into the yellow a little bit, but not too much. Kind of did a little too much right here, but it's okay. Add some of this burn color to the tails. Oops, sorry, can't see. Okay. All right, and then I'm cleaning my brush. Patricia says, I'm editing some videos for work, watching you at the same time. It's very re relaxing and allows me to concentrate, so much better. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad you like these. Shelly says, I'm finishing up my quilt. Well, you were stressing over painting veins. I was stressing over trimming edges. <laughs> and then she says, a cutting mistake would result in hours of repairing. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. That is stressful. We, we did make it through, didn't we? <laughs> Hannah says, had to step away for about 15 minutes. Wow, this butterfly has come to life. It's beautiful and so beautifully framed by the eucalyptus. Thank you. Uh, he, uh, Ashton says, painting butterflies has always been a frustrating process for me, but the ending result is rewarding. It is, yeah. But butterflies are difficult. Um, very difficult and takes a lot of practice. Okay, I'm taking this main dark blue from Daniel Smith with my size two round brush and I'm going to paint in his body a little bit more and add this to the middle part of his body, that line that's in the middle and take my blending brush and just kind of dab at this 
And then he does have some horizontal lines. So I'm going to kind of move that paint and then use whatever paint is in my blending brush to kind of paint those in like that. And then I'm going to take more of that dark blue and kind of paint the outer edge of his body or kind of like where his wings overlap his body to make a shadow. And then I'm switching to my blending brush and kind of blending this a little bit. I don't want my yellow to disappear, so I want to be careful not to blend too much. Okay, I'm going to go back into this area here again. Okay. Catlin says, going out for a walk with my boys now. It was nice being here. It looks beautiful. Have fun. Enjoy your Friday. Fallon says, I stepped away for a while because work got busy and I came back and gasped at how pretty the, the butterfly is. <laughs> Thank you, Fallon. Um, and she says, I love how you made the colors match the reeds. Thank you. We're almost done, guys. Almost done. Um, okay, I feel like I, I could spend hours more on this butterfly, seriously. Let's go ahead and paint in the antennas. And then we will add final touches and be done. So the antennas are a lot like the veins, so um, you don't want too much water in your paint or too little water. And I like to use a script brush or liner brush. So again, if you need a refresher, I'm using size one, silver black velvet script brush. And I think I did link this in the description too. And I'm going to test it on this sheet of paper. Okay, all right, here we go. I always like to start at the top. And the top is a little bit thicker. Okay. First one is done. <laughs> All right. I always like to have the antenna point towards me. So kind of angled towards me. I always find this easier to paint. And you don't want to paint your line too slowly because then you're more likely to make it wobbly looking and you don't want to go too fast either. You just have to find the right speed. Okay, I'm going to make this top part on this one a little bigger because it's a little smaller than the other one. All right, now it's time for like the final details, final details. So I am going to grab another brush here. My 
Filbert Greener brush. It's, it's like a rake brush. Okay, it's, uh, it's perfect for fur or like foliage, like grass. And I'm gonna paint in the little furs we see on him. Now, the furs in the reference are brown, but I like to do my own thing, you know, so I'm not gonna do brown. Instead, I'm just gonna do the dark blue I've been using. Okay, and, and I, I would also test on a sheet of paper. So you, you see how it's, it's just not very smooth looking? Look at that. You wanna add more water then. But you, you also don't wanna add too much water because then if you add too much water to your rake brush, you won't get the individual, um, the, the individual streaks. This is kind of more what I'm going for. So it looks like they kind of emerge, like, um, from by his body and then kind of down. Oh, this part is stressful too. If you mess up like I just did, <laughs> take a, another brush that's clean and has a little bit of water and just kind of blend, blend. Less is better too. It's easy to just go overboard with this. Okay, I'm gonna add some kind of down here. All right, maybe some like over here. Uh, Paula says, are you selling prints of this? Yeah, I, I can um, put the original in my shop, but if, if you want a print, just let me know, Fallon. You can email me um, or message me on Instagram. Okay, okay. So we're basically done, but now I'm just kind of looking at this butterfly and... Um, Trying to see, oops, try, trying to see how I can make this better. Um, all right, so I'm pretty happy with it, but I kind of feel like I, I do want to add some little, like a little bit more detail to him. So I'm going to take my white gouache here, and if you look at the butterfly reference photo, you'll see that he does have some like little tiny white dots and areas. So I kind of want to add some of that um, to him. So I'm just going to take this white gouache here right from the tube with my size two round brush and use the, uh, the very tip. And I'm just going to um, add a tiny little white The, the smaller, the better. In fact, I should probably just add some to my palette. 
I already have some like a little bit right here, but I'll just add a little bit more. If you don't have white gouache, I definitely would recommend getting some because it really comes in handy with watercolor. I just added a little bit of water to this. And for this, less is better too. Like I know there's like a lot white specks in the reference, but it is easy to go overboard with this. <laughs> it's easy to get carried away. And then yeah, he does have some white, like little white dots on his head like this. Okay, I kind of added way too much. Um, I'm gonna take my brush here, kind of. Kind of dab at that. I'll, I'll fix that later. Gosh, I just messed up. <laughs> um, okay. Right, and I messed up there. It's easy to mess up with gouache because if you have too much water in your gouache, it makes really big dots. And I just kind of mess that up too. Wow, you guys are like seeing me mess up here. <laughs> I'll, 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 fix, I'll fix these mistakes here in a second so you can see how I um, fix them. But Yeah, just a few little dots here and there. Okay, and then I'm going to go down here and add some. Okay, and then I will add, add some over here. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you how to fix mistakes if you added too much gouache. So I cleaned my brush and now I'm taking this dark blue I'm just gonna kind of paint over it a little bit. Like that. Great. I think I'm done. Um, what, what do you guys think of it? Did you like this tutorial? Sorry it was kind of long. Uh, but I'll give you a close-up. There's a chance I might add a little bit more detail to him later on, like on my own time. But I, he's basically all done. Right.
Here we go. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Patricia. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, Joyce. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, I'm going to say goodbye to you. So let me switch my camera around so I can give you a proper goodbye. Um, again, if you haven't joined my free 10 day watercolor butterfly challenge, I have a challenge. It's free, comes with tutorials just like this. So I'll link that in the description. Um, yeah, look at that. I love it. I'm so happy with it. Um, yeah. I really like it. Yeah, happy Easter, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a lot of fun. Um, if you're new here, I go live every Friday at 10 a.m. EST. So hopefully I'll see you again maybe next Friday. And um, yeah, I feel like there's something else I was going to tell you guys. But I think that's it. All right. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me. And have a great weekend. Bye. Bye, Shelly, Joyce, Hannah, Fallon, Sarah, Reed, uh, Patricia was here. Catlin was here. Shelly, I think I already said your name. Um, Liz was here. Des. Bye, guys. Take care. Appreciate you all. Bye. Don't forget to use my hashtag, too, so I can see it and tag me on Instagram. If you finish your butterfly. Okay. Bye, guys.